This is Terms of Reference. I'm your host, Stephen Laddick. Getting an idea off the ground is incredibly difficult, even when you have access to the right resources, tools, funding, and networks. So what happens when you not only have none of that access, but the very place you live in is known as an active conflict zone? Can entrepreneurship be used as a bridge to not only help people out of poverty, but also to change the dynamics of conflict? My guest today on the 125th episode of the Terms of Reference podcast, Ken Ben Sedon, believes this is possible. He is the Vice President for Business Development and Operations for Unistream, an organization in Israel that empowers teens from underprivileged communities and all walks of life by helping them to create their own entrepreneurial ventures. I spoke with Ken in Haifa. And hey, before we dive into the episode, if you like what you're hearing, take a moment to open up iTunes, Google Play, or Stitcher, or whatever your podcast app happens to be, and click on subscribe. Also consider giving the show a rating, because it really does help. And finally, please consider sharing this episode or the podcast on Facebook or Twitter to help others get in on making aid and development better. Now on to the show with Ken and Unistream. Hello, Ken. Thank you so much for being on the Terms of Reference podcast today. Thank you, Stephen. It's an honor to be here. Where are you sitting today? In Israel. Israel Haifa, actually. Excellent. So uh, let's see, we're recording this in uh, August of 2016. Is it just really super hot there? Yes, it's super <laughs> hot. <laughs> but we are air conditioned. Ah, well, there, of course. <laughs> so, Ken, you, uh, you are with an organization called Unistream. And yes. the reason we wanted to talk was because Unistream is one of the organizations across Israel that are, you know, pursuing innovation, you know, pushing the limits about how you uh, you find innovation and foster it and sort of bring it to life. So why don't you why don't you tell us, give us a little bit of a background on the organization and and you know uh, what it's done and what you know what what the future looks like. Okay, fine. Uh, Unistream created in 2001 by Ronnie Tsaro. Ronnie is a businessman. He uh, is the person who connected the internet to cell phone in 2000 before we even thought about uh, the obvious product. Ronnie was born and raised in Ramle, unprivileged city in Israel. And after years of success in his business life, he wanted to give something back to the community. He built Unistream to empower teenagers in the business field. And in Unistream, we supply teenagers from unprivileged cities through all Israel with tools and experience needed in order to succeed. Let me stop you for one second. Define what an unprivileged city is. What does that, what does that mean? Unprivileged city is the periphery of Israel. It's not only Tel Aviv. We believe that you can take the startup nation and extend it to all Israel. Mm-hmm. Most of the time when people in Israel talked about the startup nation, it's Tel Aviv. Oh, okay. All right. And we believe, and we, believe we can make innovation thinking and run startups in Sakhnin, in Sfat, in Elat, in every city in Israel that is not close to the, to the center. So, so continue on. So, you, you decided that he, he decided that he wanted to start this center and he wanted to have it all over Israel, and then what? Yes. So, from 2001 until today, we have opened and continue to operate 13 centers through all Israel. We have 100 groups that are currently working on their startup. We have 900 alumni that deliver our message to the community, academic field, and workforce in Israel. And we have a strong community of 2,000 businessmen and businesswomen who volunteer their time and experience to help us to fulfill our vision. In 2013, we won the Presidential uh, Volunteer Medal from Simon Perez. And as you know, a few uh, months ago, um, we won the Intercultural Innovation Award. It's a very unique news stream. We work in diversity um, communities. So what we specially do, we operate three major programs. First is the Junior MBA. It's a three-year program 
that we operate in our center and which is similar to the academic MBA, but they, they have a practical uh, methodology that they uh, build their own startup. Every group of teenagers in the age of 15 to 18 run startups and produce products. And we have startup now. It's more practical. It's a one year uh, program whereby schools and community centers uh, hosted us. And we have Upstart is an allied innovation program for teenagers also. It's similar to Accelerator in the real world. But in all our three programs, we focus on three major topics. It's business and technology, leadership and responsibility, social responsibility and social impact. And we believe that by experiencing and excelling in this area, students will have the, the tools to become a business leaders and they will be aware to the and will be a social responsibility business people hmm. that impact others it's very important for us yes we try to educate the next leader of israel and so we hope to be to do a better israel before I dive into some of the, the usual questions yeah, we have, get, what's your favorite story? You know, you've been, I, I think you've been with them for five or six years now. Yeah. What's, what's your favorite success story that's come out of Unistream that, that you like to tell everybody about? Yeah, there are, I will focus on three, I think. First is uh, the Old Box. Old Box is a novel lunch box that can eat food on its own with just capsule like an espresso machine, a little water and no electricity, no gas, no anything. This group of Arab and Jews from Akko, they developed for three years this product. And Oa Sulin, only 17 years old, the CEO of the startups, her VP is Arab, she is a Jewish religious, and they work together, they are like 17 uh, students in the group. And or the CEO was chosen to light traditional torch in the Independence Day ceremony of Israel. It's a huge honor in Israel. Wow, that's a big deal, yeah, sure. Yes. And another example is the eyeliner that's now called Easy Liner. It's a sand steel for drawing the perfect eyeliner. I don't know, I think I, I heard it's a, it's a huge uh, problem. So, so, so wait, I guess it's the you know, eyeliner isn't a big deal for you, or it's that <laughs> not for me, not, not for me, but not for me. But uh, there is a huge market, and uh, one of our alumni from Nazareth, uh, Atzrat Elite, and with her group, uh, it called she called a more, and they sold their product to a company from London, and now you can. You can buy your uh, your eyeliner, easy liner, the, the sand steel. You can buy it, uh, and it's uh, the first exit of Unistream. And it's unbelievable because they developed it, they developed the, the product at the age of 15, 15 wow. until 18. Yes, and they sold it at the age of 19. Did Unistream? Um, did you? Did Unistream help them to exit? I mean, was that? A, were you a part yes. of that? That. that? Process. Yes, yes. We have, we have a community of 2,000 businessmen and women. They connect her and the group to uh, the one, to the company in London. We try to help them with knowledge and connection. Nice. But, so would you have also re- recommended lawyers and, 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 you know, helping them to craft the deal to make sure that they sort of got out got the best deal that they would have, that, that well, they should have gotten or? Of course, they do all the stages that uh, startups need to do from the innovation thinking until the marketing, business development, sales and everything. Also, uh, lawyers and uh, patents to write patents and everything. We have a lot of uh, diversity businessmen and topics in our community and everyone helps with is tools and knowledge. Maybe it's lawyers or it's uh, industrial um, designers. It can be in every level, in every stage, different professionalists. Mm-hmm. So give me a sense 
I think people who, you know in the audience who are listening to us right now they they may think mm, okay so this is you know this is just another incubator and you said you know there's there's an accelerator piece to it and whatnot what do you think are the pieces of unistream that are bending and stretching the model of sort of your typical incubator space or your typical accelerator space or there what what's the what's the special sauce maybe i mean it could be as simple as as your location or it could be the people you draw in what are they okay so first it's educational program it's not focused on the product we don't care if it's Sandsteel or it's Outbox or it's, uh, I don't know, an app. And we have right now an app for, uh, from Hadera that uh, shows the, uh, the situation in the beach in Israel. And you can understand if you, don't, if you want to go to the beach, the, what is the, how much people there. And this is the, uh, in the first place in the App Store and the Google in the section of weather. But we, we do it. We do it like in any accelerator, but this is not, we are not focused on the product. We focus on the leaders. We try to educate. So when someone them. comes to Unistream initially, the application they're putting in is selling themselves, not selling a product idea. Yes. Yes. It's, a, it's like a pre-accelerator, if you want to think about that. And of course, we work through all Israel. We have center in Alat, in Netivot, in Rat, in Or Yehuda, in Atania, Hadera, Fula. It's uh, in Julis, in Sachnin, in Akko. It's uh, we try to, we want to, to think that we help Israel to become a startup nation, and not that we 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 think that if our alumni will participate in Accelerator at the age of 25 and they will succeed, this is for us a success because we gave kids from Sakhnin, unprivileged city, that they have no connection, no network, no, no one aimed them to succeed to academic field. And if the age of 25, they will think that they can do it and they will apply to Accelerator, it will be great. And we, we, we try to uh, change their mindset and to make impact in their community, they will be the role model of their community. Mm. Do you have any examples of maybe how that uh, that mindset and that impact has circled back to the communities where they come from? Have have some of their ideas gone back and you know, yes, of course, transformed their communities in some ways? Of course. First, we have formed alumni program. We do three things with our alumni. We we keep in touch with them. Uh, and we try to see how we can help them in every aspect in their life. We always said in Unistream that we want to help them. You can't, you can't quit Unistream. When we join Unistream and you finish the program... <laughs> you, can, we'll, you can join, but you can never leave. That's, that's yeah, you can never leave. <laughs> we'll, we'll be with you like your family, for example, for life. And with the alumni, for right now, our alumni, our oldest alumni, I think, is uh, 28, something like that. So we see that we need to focus on the CV and the career. So we, we, do, we do three major things. First, uh, for academic students, we help them to integration of in varieties, positions at leading companies. Second, we have now a lot of alumni that uh, didn't go to academic field, but we have 20% of that, something like that, and we give them a technology course. We start a course with Google and with an Elevation Academy and Facebook, and they help them to, to see that to learn new cool technology, and the business is not something that you need to fear for, and you you should go to the academic after the course, and uh, we encourage them to to do it, and we help them to promote uh, startups by their own, and we have we try to cooperate with Abelat and to give them what they need with the offices and the uh, rent and everything to just focus with their startups. But we see it every day. We see our alumni that right now help in the centers after they work in a huge company in Israel. 
and they uh, come to the centers and help to the uh, kids to do it, present as a role model. And it's very important for us. Mm. What are you going to do differently uh, sort of going forward? I think if I remember correctly when we, when we talked a while back that I know you're going to set up some more centers across Israel, but are there, are there other programs that you're going to be bringing in? Are there other, yes. other opportunities that you're going to be putting on the table to continue to grow? Tell me about those. Yes. First, we want to integrate the technology knowledge into our curriculum. We understand that it's very important. We want to give them the best tools to deal with the real world after they graduate our program. So the technology is very important, especially in Israel, a startup nation. Uh, we think that we believe that every child needs to know how to uh, code and how to produce a 3D model with the 3D printing. And now we want to integrate technology. We start with 3D modeling and uh, coding, but we want to do it more professional. It's uh, something that we do in-house, uh, but it's something that we want to, to extend it and to integrate it in like courses in the academic of uh, like a computer science. It's, it's something that's very important and we see it. And of course, we want to extend our centers in uh, new cities, Arab cities or, uh, or new cities that uh, needs us. So if you've been in this space for a while and you've obviously looked at other accelerator programs, other incubator programs, are there other things, you know, like you said, you're bringing in technology and the, the 3D printing and these types of things. Are there other ways that, that you've seen this particular industry or sector disrupted over the last couple of years that, I mean, maybe bringing your own technology or are, the, are the, the kids who are coming into your program, are they a little more advanced? Are you behind the times or anything like that? We try to think about it. We, we try to focus on the, I don't know, the, the new technology that no one deal with and we want to to invest in, in this technology and um, I think in Israel right now um, all the computer science is the most important skill that you can give to, to kids or, or teenagers or even alumni I think computer science and business of course but we, we believe that you you should be a businessman with a social responsibility and maybe these skills of leadership and understand that the leadership in Israel will be will become from the periphery and not from the center and this is the way to change Israel and if you work with Arabs at the age of 14 this is something again very important tell me about that aspect because the elephant in the room for probably most of the people listening to to this our conversation right now is that how do you facilitate the the Arab Jew relationship? And I mean, is it just you try to just sort of be blind during the application process and you, you just don't discuss it, or is it something that you you tackle very specifically? No, we, ta we tackle it very specifically. We are Unistream is a democracy organization. Uh, we work in every city and diversity we have all the all the communities in israel are in unistream even druze the bedouin um, arab muslim christian jews everyone and it's something that's very important because we believe that this is the way to change israel and it's something that we tackle and uh, every kids that apply understand it and he meet for a few, maybe if it's a center in Haifa, Akko, and Nasrat Elite, um, those centers, uh, Arabs and Jews work together. But for example, if it's in uh, Netivot, that there are not Arabs in the city, but they meet uh, Arab uh, teenagers in every peak events that we have almost once a month. So it's something that's very important for us. And um, as you know, Israel is a very complicated uh, country mm -hmm. in this issue. And we deal with this issue all the time. And of course, when there is war or terror attacks, 
it's much more difficult for us to to work. Uh, but I think that the methodology of business is what it's the the methodology that wins for us because I think that in business diversity is an advantage. When we see it in our, uh, for example, in Haifa, for example, it's a center that Jewish and Arabs work together. There, there are more innovation. They are more innovative because they think differently. But in business, the way they think differently is an advantage. I think this is why we excel uh, to work with the diversity communities. How do you address or how do you cope with conflict or disagreements? Is that is that something that you teach the students as they're going through that, that they are they have internal coping mechanisms or do you have a, a special mechanism for deal with, you know, dealing with conflicts that, that might arise? Of course. We teach them in a business aspect and then we try to reflect it to their lives. But first, we always focus in the business, in the business methodology. For example, I sign deal, uh, I uh, deal with the customer. So we try to, to focus on the business and after that, we, we try to reflect it to, to their lives, their group, um, the challenges in their groups, the challenges in the startups, and the challenges in Israel. It's very important for us. Do you find that, that does that trickle back or, or do you find pressure from parents or, or other adult supervisors in their lives? Do you extend that far out as well? I don't think so. I can't remember a specific example. They are teenagers, so I think they, they understand. They understand. Mm-hmm. They understand the, they have a, the feeling what is right to say and what, what not, I think. Uh, so they understand and they, they live in the city so they live with the Arabs and Jews they live in Israel they understand uh, the situation but we try to expose them and we have for example meetings with uh, uh, multicultural uh, meetings for example they uh, everyone need to tell about uh, something cultural and uh, and they, we expose them to the multicultural in a good way, I think. Maybe with that, it's something that we, when we do it in the age of 14, maybe it's not an issue at the age of F18. And we see it. For example, at the end of the first year, they need to choose to choose the CEO to the company. And we see that, for example, Jewish choose Arab CEO or Arab choose a Jewish CEO. And it's unbelievable in the matter of Israel. For example, I can see right now in Israel that Jewish choose Arab uh, prime minister. Sure, sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But we believe we believe in uh, with Unistream, it's not an issue. I choose the person that uh, fit to lead me. As an organization, I mean, does your founder still work on behalf? Of, I mean, how does the network interact with the with Israel in this way you know I feel like there there must be some probably some intense pressure from particular groups within within Israel both Arab and Jew and whomever saying hey what are you doing why are you helping them or why are you you know on both sides do you do you experience that at all we try to be an unpolitical um, organization we don't take side we don't want to take side we, we believe that by and development and foster teenagers, Arab and Jews, by business methodology, we can create uh, the tomorrow's leaders. So we try to be more, we don't want to take sides. So because of that, I think uh, we had no, uh, I don't know, extreme groups or someone that uh, feels that they're giving you pressure or putting pressure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because we work in every in every cities that we can. And we try to do it equal. Maybe because of that, because it's equal, we work in Etivot, for example. It's very it's a religious uh, and traditional city in Israel. And we work in Sakhnin. 
So it's an Arab uh, Muslim, the biggest, I think, city in Israel. So maybe because we try to do it equal, it's, uh, it's worked for us. Mm. How does this stay funded? Um, you know, it was founded by a person who was successful in business and you know, he put his money on the table. Do you have to continue to raise funds? Do you have an endowment? Yes. How does that work? I'll, of course, this is the most challenging thing, I think. Um, of course, from found uh, funds. You mean you mean the the eyeliner people didn't you know give you a cut of their exit strategy so that you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe we'll uh, talk to them. Uh, <laughs> can be nice, and they will share their knowledge with us. I think it's uh, it's it will be great. But uh, no, I'm joking. Uh, of course, like any association in uh, in the world or NGO in the world, it's uh, fu- from funds, from uh, companies, um, private um, investors or private donors. We have a very good reputation in Israel in the business uh, community. So we, we know how to work with the business community and uh, we work with uh, seniors. In, and of course, we have Ronnie. Ronnie is very involved. Ronnie, the, our chairman, is very involved. He knows everything, and he, this is his baby. As I told you, Ronnie, born and raised in Ramla, I think uh, Unistream is uh, the story of his life, and it's something that's very important. And Ronnie is a VIP. He's a very important person in Israel. So, a lot of uh, senior businessmen know him. And do you pull support from the, the, the greater Arab and Jewish communities around the Middle East and, you know, America and the Europe and those kinds of things? Yes, not something that uh, there is something right now. I don't really want to talk about it because it's not it's not finished. But yes, of course, we, we try to recruit money from every fund, from everything we, we can. And uh, we think about our teenagers, you know, this is the most important. So we, we try to work hard from everyone that want to be involved in our activity and want to help us. It's a, uh, we welcome his, uh, his help. As someone who's been with the organization for several years, and as you said, you've got a huge network, you have kids coming through every year, you know, they're put into these groups. What are the biggest challenges um, other than, you know, your sort of standard and let's learn to work together and let's solve problems? What are the unique challenges that you are finding you have to overcome beyond fundraising? I will say two major challenges. First is uh, an in-house challenge. I think is uh, the operate. To operate uh, the program is uh, through all Israel. It's not like an ex- uh, incubator or an accelerator that they come to you, in, for example, if you do have an accelerator in the Silicon Valley, uh, most of the startups will come to you and they work in your open space. And in our case, it, we can do it. We need to work in a lot and we need to work in RAT and, and because we work in, with teenagers and our centers are far uh, one to another and it's very difficult to operate it because we have, I think, 80 group. This is just the administration you're talking about of, of staffing it, of supplies, it, of, of everything. Yeah, management. You, you need to manage people across the country. And we are, we are an association. We are not uh, Microsoft, for example, that we have a lot of money and we can do it. Uh, so it's very challenging to do it. And you, you want to, and, and this is uh, number one. And the second challenge in-house is that Program. We believe that the innovation program must be updated every year because we want to be in the cutting edge technology, cutting edge knowledge, cutting edge academic business fields, uh, cutting edge studies, and, and everything. And it's very difficult to implement it in uh, because every city has a different manager and different agenda and different style and different way of thinking and every city is, is different and every center is, is different and it's uh, all the time we need to put a lot of effort to implement our new methodology and uh, 
and it's not easy because most of our center managers are not from expertise are not from the business field mm-hmm. um, it's uh, for education or uh, some of them from business but most of them are not so it's very difficult to to implement it because we need a special uh, magicians uh, manager centers because they need to know how to work with teenagers they need to know how to work with technology business how to operate center to manage uh, all the budget it's it's not it's not easy to be a center manager in industry yeah it does sound like a magician job what about the what about the <laughs> external pressures you're talking about the external i think that in israel the startup nation is uh, right now there are a lot a lot of programs and a lot of accelerators and incubators it's something that is i think something with the world uh, of uh, startups is i don't know it's, it's not a it's everyone is a startup in israel is something that, uh, that most so of the people know what to do yeah, yeah everyone's a startup so no one's a startup right yes it's, uh, it's something that so and and right now in israel there is no respect for education. Uh, I don't know if it's not respect, but people want to see results. So is this a, do you see like a dropout culture coming in where people are sort of, you know, I don't need to go to school. I, I'm, yeah, I'm just going yeah. to make the next product. Yes, and maybe not school. I don't need to learn. I know how to do it. I can read it online. And you see a lot of people fail. And we try to teach our kids, our teenagers, that it's, entrepreneurship way of thinking it's a positive thinking is the the way to it's it's not matter if you fail with these specific startups it's what you do the next uh, the next time how you become a better businessman and i think that most of the programs in israel are very attractive but they focus in the in the results and sometimes we have difficulties to recruit our students because they see they see that okay i want money from okay the three after the three years i will have one million dollar sure the startups that i will get okay let's talk about it but it's not it's not going to happen but we want to that you will become a, 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 i don't know the future leader and i think that it's 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 more difficult and of course the mentors in israel because there are a lot of uh, programs uh, it's, we, we work hard uh, with our community that sometimes in the, involve in other uh, accelerators or programs for adults. We are very unique, I think, in Israel uh, in that we focus in teenagers. Most of the, I think, 99% of the programs in Israel are for adults. But our mentors, for example, spend time in, in their incubators. So they obviously don't want to... Um, go drive to Rat or to a lab because they have the other activity in Tel Aviv. So we need to convince them sure, that it's more sense. important. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's more important to drive to Akko than to help someone from Tel Aviv. So, Ken, I have two questions that I always ask everybody at the end of every interview. And one, the first one is, who do you pay attention to? You know what? What blogs do you read? What you know? What podcasts do you listen to? Other than this one, of course. What movements or trends do you pay attention to to keep yourself fresh or to help Unistream stay fresh? Of course, all the economic um, I don't know, magazine in Israel and the U.S. Most of them I try to be update. Um, there are someone, some uh, news uh, magazine online online uh, magazine, very nice and very um, friendly in uh, Israel called Geek Time. They have an English... Uh, nice. Yeah, are you familiar with that? I'm not, but I just like Geek Time, right? I mean, I'm a super yes, geek. Yes, so. he's one. Yeah, um, the founders are uh, one of our mentors. And it's very friendly. It's very friendly and nice and... Uh, and you can be updated with all the what happened in the startups uh, community in Israel. And they have an English, uh, an English uh, section, so you can uh, also follow them. I think it'd be nice. Nice. My last question is: Is there a particular innovation 
outside of the Unistream universe. It could be maybe somebody who graduated or, or, you know, something that's helping people out there, right, in development or humanitarian aid. Is there something that you're, you geek out on that you think is super cool? Okay, besides Unistream? Yeah, something, uh, besides, something besides Unistream. No, like I have only Unistream. <laughs> <laughs> only Unistream. I don't know other, other fields or aspects. <laughs> I work 24-7. 24, 24 I see you. You need to, you need to hear it. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. I think that maybe in the UN, when we were in the UN uh, capacity building, and of course you uh, lectured uh, us, uh, we I met nine amazing people that uh, has uh, an amazing uh, associations uh, or startups we can say I think that safe city that the one that uh, we uh, we met and you also interviewed I think it's very it's powerful it's, it's impact me I think the way that to use technology for social uh, goals I think is the is the best and it's something very interesting. Mm. We have a lot in Israel that uh, try to combine social and technology. I think it's, uh, for me, it's very interesting. Ken, thank you so much for being on the show today. I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you very much. You've been listening to the Terms of Reference podcast from aidpreneur.com. Subscribe to us on iTunes. (laughs) 